Hallelujah. As you're seated, open your Bibles to the 42nd Psalm. Please, praise God. The last several Sundays I've been ministering, praise God, on patience and faith, faith and patience. Okay, amen. And we have in our bookstore a book I wrote on the subject of patience and faith. Praise the Lord. And so you can, of course, order it and get it online or you can get it in our bookstore and in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, we're going to talk about something else that is also connected to faith and patience as we have read these scriptures the last two weeks. Okay, amen. And there's one thing, a number of these scriptures talked about that at the time, of course, I was focusing on the patient side of things. And that's the word hope. Amen. Amen. Look at three people and tell them this, hope in God. Hope in God. God. Praise the Lord. Uh, Amen. Now, you'll find that in the in the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, you'll find some definitions for the word hope. The, let's read it here in Psalm 42, 5. Praise God. It might be good if I turned over there. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 42. Now, David here is talking to himself. You ever talk to yourself? Yes. Praise God. Amen. I'm glad that you acknowledge that. Because we all actually do it. Amen. But Psalm 42, verse 5, David said, Why are you cast down or bowed down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted in me? Anybody ever felt this way? What does he tell you to do? He said, Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the hope of his countenance, or help of his countenance, which means his presence is salvation. So note what he said. He said to hope in God. Now, the Hebrew word here is yahel. Yahel means to be patient in God. Stay in God. Amen. Wait on God. Connected with what we've been talking about the last couple of Sundays, right? Amen. And, no, and, of course, you'll find that several times throughout the book of Psalms, David says this multiple times, this exact quote, exactly like that. Okay, amen. Encouraging himself. Satan understands that if he can get you discouraged, that he's then got you in a position, then that's when he can attack with full force. He wants to get you discouraged. And in fact, the whole reasons for temptations, tests, and trials is just that. Uh, amen. To come and discourage you so Satan can have his way with you. Amen. And he's been successful in teaching uh, or getting much of the church to believe that when things go bad, that somehow it is God's fault. Amen. When it is he that's doing the attacking. And the reason why he's doing the attacking is to kill, steal, or destroy you. As Jesus said in John 10, 10. Praise God. There's another Hebrew word for the word hope is betak. Betak means, praise God, hope is a place of refuge. That it is a place of safety. It is a place of assurance. And hope is a place of confidence. Praise God. And then, of course, there's the New Testament word hope, amen, that's el peace. And el peace means, hope means to anticipate with pleasure. It's a confident expectation, praise the Lord. And so hope encompasses all these things. So one of, as I always, I train my ministers, you always ask questions. And these are the questions you always ask when you study the word. Who? Where, why, when, and how. Praise God. So then you're going to ask the question then, how is it that we get hope? Where does hope come from? Praise the Lord. How does it work? Well, turn to Romans chapter 15, praise God, because hope is critical. Keeping your hope alive 
is critical to success. In fact, keeping hope alive is critical just to life, period. Anyone who has lost hope, these are people that Satan is able to convince to kill themselves, regardless of their age. These are the people, uh, praise God, who wind up in desperate situations because they have lost hope. You see, uh, man, mankind is a three-part being. Science and medicine only, only recognize two. Science and medicine only recognize the body. And they only recognize the mind, the mental, emotional side. But you're not a body and you're not a mental, emotional. The Bible tells you that you are a spirit being. In fact, Proverbs, 10, uh, Proverbs 20, 27, I believe, says this. It said, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly, 2027, Proverbs. Amen. In other words, he said that the spirit of man is the place whereby God is able to enlighten you. It's the place by which you contact God, because you contact God with the spirit realm, spirit to spirit. You contact the natural world with your body, natural body to natural body. You contact the mental mind or, or, or the emotions with the mind or the soulless realm. And so, amen, the strongest of the tripart nature bands, spirit, soul, and body. The strongest of the three is the spirit. Because you are a spirit. You are made in the image and likeness of God. And the Bible says God is a spirit, so are you. Amen. So you are a spirit being that has a soul, mind, will, and emotions. And you live in a physical body, praise God. But how God enlightened you is from the inside out. So oftentimes people are trying to contact God from the outside in. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. So let's answer some of those questions. Romans chapter 15. Let's take a look here at verse 4. For, where, for whatsoever things were written aforetime. What's that? That's scripture. Okay, amen. Here he's talking about Old Testament from the prophets. We're written for our learning. That's what the Bible's about. And if your church doesn't cause you to learn, okay, amen, you're in the wrong church. See, if, if, if too many churches are about the soul and the body, so they get the soul excited emotionally, okay, amen, and then manifest that through the body. There's nothing wrong with good emotions. There's nothing wrong with, praise God, praising and dancing and rejoicing with the body. Amen. But all of that's supposed to be because of what happens with the spirit. Amen. So if the spirit realm is not the ascendancy of a church and more of it's the emotional. See, my, my job is not to get you happy. Your job ain't to make you shout and it's definitely not, not here. It's not to entertain you. And now that's not a pastor's job. It's not what's supposed to be a pastor's job. Now, he doesn't tell me. My job is to, Jesus said, feed the sheep and the lamb. Deal with their spirit man. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so he says here that we through continue patience and comfort of the scripture. That's what the scripture gives you. The scripture will help you walk in patience, which is critical. It will comfort you. And guess what else it will do? It will give you hope. And so the first place that you get hope from is the word, praise God, Romans 10, 17, we can quote it, you can put it up on the screen. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But not only does faith comes by hearing and hearing, Praise God, hearing with the ears, hearing with the spirit, hearing and hearing, because you can hear with the ears and not hear and receive with the spirit. He said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but not only does faith comes that way, hope also comes that way. In fact, the proper order of actually how it happens in scripture, as I'm going to show you, hope comes first. And then faith's job is to produce what the hope is. Are you listening to me? See, hope is critical. If you have no hope, there's no place for faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Take a look at Psalm 119. We'll look at the 49th verse. But in Psalm 119, thank you, Jesus. It's too quiet in here. Lord knows I don't like quiet churches. And I know I don't pastor one. Do I? So can I get three hallelujahs, somebody? Yeah, there we go. Praise God. I'm in word of faith now. Psalm 119 verse 49 says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. The word is what brings hope first. How? It brings hope, praise God, to you in whatever form that word comes to you. Now, the word can come to you in a lot of different ways. Obviously, praise God, here having the word preached, hope will come to you before you sit down today, or should I say, before you leave here today. Hope will. You will have more hope when you walk out of here today. Glory to God. You'll have something for your faith to go to work on. Well, preaching is one way in which you get it, preaching and teaching of the word. Let me tell you another way that hope comes, and this is why we teach on this subject, and that song, actually, that last song was, uh, praise God, apropos for it. And that's through meditation of the word. Now, remember, the word meditate, praise God, doesn't mean to sit in the middle of the floor, cross your legs, and go, shum da li No, the word meditate, praise God, they stole that from us. The word meditate means to mutter, Speak to yourself. I got to ask you a question. How many of you speak to yourself? Sure, you talk to yourself. You say, what's the matter with me? Okay, you tell yourself stuff. Well, praise God, to, to meditate, the word means to speak it into the atmosphere. It means to say it, praise God. There are a number of things when you do, amen, in the spirit room that happens with demons, angels, other things. But something else happens when you meditate or when you mutter, when you say the word. You give yourself hope. That's why meditation is important and why you need to do this every single day. Now, I'm just going to be flat out honest with you. Okay. Now, I make this a point to do every single day. Amen if possible, before I ever leave the house. Okay. See, see, with me, I'm not leaving the house till I don't done this. Now, I know I'm being honest with you. I, I know three quarters of Christians don't do this. Okay, so, uh, I mean, getting Christians to meditate the word every day, I mean, they won't even come to church regularly because their body's in control. Their body says, I'm tired, so they don't come to church. Amen. Their body's in control. So what they are, and the Bible calls it, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, you are body rude, carnal Christians. Because you certainly go to work whether you're tired or not. Amen. Right? There's a choice that's made, and the scripture, scripture uses several terms for it. It's called being slothful. It's called being lazy. Amen. What it means is that the body is what's in control and not the spirit man. Because the spirit man is always saying what the scripture said. And the scripture said, praise God, forsake not the assemblies of yourself together. And it reads, much more as the day approaches to the coming of the Lord. It said to go to church even more physically. Okay, amen. Praise God. And so we know that good ground is not, amen. Remember that word good there in the parable of the sower. It means worthy ground. One of the definitions of that word good. Worthy ground is ground, praise God, that takes ascendancy over the body and the mind and lets the spirit and the word be in charge. Shout amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. And so we see that we get it, get it directly from the word. So when you meditate the word aloud out your mouth daily, it reminds you. It produces hope when you say, the doctor's report says, no, you got this situation and 
Praise God. And you, and you say what God says, Matthew 8, 17. Himself, Jesus, took my infirmity and bore my sins. Oh, that gives you hope. Amen. When your bank account says, oh, oh, oh. Amen. And you say, you meditate, you think about it, and you say it again. God supplies all my Keep you from doing stupid, something stupid. Philippians 4, 19, praise God, amen. And we can go on around the whole list of things. But it's extremely important that you produce hope for yourself every day. Now, Hebrews 11, chapter. let's take a look at verse 1, very familiar verse of scripture, praise God. Amen. Hebrews 11, 1 says this, now faith, pistis, name of our Bible school, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Note what it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Praise God. Amen. It is the substance of things. It is, amen, the ground of things. It is the floor of things, of things hoped for. So hope is first. Now we get to faith, and faith has five elements, of course. Hearing that word, hope comes from that. Receiving that word, James 1.21, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Hearing, receiving. Then you make a decision to believe the word. That's from the heart, Romans 10, 9. Believe with your heart, Romans 10, 10. Praise God. Then you speak it, Romans 10, 10. Praise God. Your mouth confession is made unto your salvation. And then you act, James 1, 22, be doers of the word and not just hearers only. Okay, amen. So first, hope comes from meditating the word. And hope, as we'll see, is attached to patience. See, the more hope you have, the easier it is for you to remain patient. The more hope you are have, the easier it is for you to remain constant and unmoved. The more hope you have going, the more then juiced up you are to get over in the faith. See, hope is a critical thing. But whether or not you have hope or not depends on what you do. It's not what God does. It's what you do about it. You can put yourself in position to have a lot of hope. Praise God. I'm very hopeful, particularly about the future. So it is the substance of things hoped for, praise God. It is the evidence or the proof, that word evidence, of things not seen. Now all those people in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, we call it the Faith Hall of Fame, talks about Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and many other people. All these people, first of all, had hope first. How? They got a word from God. Okay, amen? They got a word from God first. They chose then to receive it, believe it, speak, and then they got up all of them and acted on that hope from that word. Uh, amen. And those two things brought about their victories, which they had, and why they wound up in the Faith Hall of Fame. Now, as far as God's concerned, you belong in the Hall of Fame too. If you operate with hope and faith, praise God, and what's connected to faith is also patience. These three things operate together. Turn to Romans chapter 8. Amen. In the, the eighth chapter of Romans, and we read here in the 24th verse, it says this, thank you, Jesus. For we are saved by hope. Now, the word save is the word sozo. We are healed, delivered, made whole, made sound, praise God, by hope. We are saved by hope, but hope which is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what does he yet hope for? In other words, hope is something, praise God, that isn't tangible yet. It's the dream. Hallelujah. And when we say I'm living the dream, if you're living the dream, it's because you had hope 
put some faith and work with it. Amen. 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 And now you are what? Living the dream. Tell your neighbor, yes, you should be living the dream. And I am living the dream. Glory to God. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, he says, verse 25, but if we hope for that we don't see yet, then do we with patience wait for it. So hope, patience, and faith, they all operate together. Amen. And the scripture takes the time to differentiate between the three because there are people who have a lot of hope, but they have no faith. See, because faith, remember, faith has action. Maybe I get an amen on this side. Faith has action attached to it. So you got a lot of people who are dreamers, but they're not doers. You can hope to be an NBA basketball player all you want, but unless you shoot 10,000 foul shots a day, it ain't going to happen. You can hope whatever it is is your dream, but you have to, with faith, act on it in order for it to be. Amen. But it starts with the hope. Nothing wrong with the dream, but don't just be a dreamer. Be a doer. Oh, I'm preaching better. I'm getting amen. Lots of people want the dream that the Bible tells you that you can have. But they slack off on being a doer of the word. Like I said, man, you can talk about all you want. You, if your body's controlling you, you can't even get up and go to church. And there's nothing wrong with you. You're just fooling yourself. Really. Your spirit man's not in control. That's just the truth. Amen. Drop your rocks. Don't throw them at me now. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul writing, of course, to the church at Thessalonica. Praise God. I've been there in Thessalonica. It says that we have a church. That's in northern Greece. We have a church in southern Greece, in Athens. He said in verse 2, we give thanks to God always for you all. Paul said, I make mention of you in prayer, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God the Father. Okay, amen. So once again, because hope, amen, with faith and patience is required for both of them. So as I've been talking about for the last few, few weeks, amen, having that patience. So the older I get, the slower I get, and I don't mean physically. What I mean is I'm talking about maturity, maturation. Spiritual maturation will teach you how to be patient. Somebody, one of my ministers said to me the other day, he said, you're one of the most patient people I know. Okay, amen. Well, if he knew me, 40 years ago, <laughs> he probably would have said you're the most impatient person I ever met. Okay, amen. What happens is that the word of God, uh, amen, will help you to understand that what you're looking at right now don't mean nothing. What the enemy trying to do, what he's trying to hold up right now, what, what attack he's bringing your way. So, I already know the outcome. I have meditated the word so much that I come to the place that I can always see because of hope, I can already see the victory. Yeah. See, hope is about seeing that victory, man. It's about seeing yourself healed and seeing yourself delivered and see yourself provided for and seeing yourself whatever it is we are talking about. But hope is very important to that. And then your faith gets attached to it. And you know, praise God, this is the victory that overcomes that world, even my faith. 1 John 5, 4, glory to God. Amen. So I've learned how to be patient with people. 
glory to God and patience with situations. Amen. That's helped me become a much better pastor. Okay, amen. So notice then, let's look at that again. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, important, labor of love, amen, and patience of hope, it is in the Lord. Glory to God. Now, what else will it do for you? Well, I'll turn to Hebrews chapter 6. Amen. So that's why David's going to say, he said, Saul, he said, why? Why are you letting yourself be this way? Hope thou in God. In other words, get a word from God. Get in the word. Say what he says. Hallelujah. Get before him. He might even speak to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't let yourself just be this way. Stop wallowing in your own self-pity. Woe is me. That person's lost their hope. And say, Satan likes to isolate you. He always wants to isolate you, make you feel bad. Amen. That's one of the reasons why he don't want you coming physically to church. Because one of the things the Bible said about why we assemble is that we have fellowship one for another. It says in Galatians, if we see a brother, amen, what do we do? We lift him up. Because all of us can be susceptible at times until we get at least filled up enough. We are susceptible to whereby we need somebody to come on and say, hey, hey, let me lift your arms. You should not let Satan isolate you in your house and your computer and make you an island. Amen. Believe it or not, you need these people who are around here. And you need other brothers and sisters, and you may not realize it until you get hit bad enough, and then later on, if you can recover at all, then you know, you know, help was available with me from the saints, but I took myself out of there. It matters where you go to church, and it matters where church you go to, and it matters whether or not you even go to church. Don't think it don't matter. It matters. Oh, yeah, it does. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, but we lost an hour of sleep today. Oh, you baby. Poor oh, baby. You going to go to work tomorrow with the hour of sleep less? Don't want to hear it. Hallelujah. Mm-mm. Praise God. Now, chapter 6 of Hebrews, take a look at verse 18. That by two immutable things, of course, that's the word in the blood, in which it's not possible to God to lie, we have a strong consolation. That word strong means powerful, praise the Lord. Comfort, consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope which is set before us. Hope is always available. If you can get to the word of God at all in any way, shape, form, or fashion, there's hope set in front of you. Are you listening to me? But he goes on to say, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul that is steadfast. Amen. Soul is that mind, the will, and emotions. Hope keeps your head on straight. While you got to talk to yourself, you're going, while you're talking to yourself, instead of talking to yourself about, you know, you stupid thing or whatever you call yourself, instead of doing that, praise God. And the Lord got on me one time because I was talking to myself. And I said, man, it was a really stupid thing. What's the matter with you? Praise God. And the Lord said, stop calling yourself stupid. Amen. You have what you say. I said, oh, I'm not stupid. I'm very bright. Amen. Say it about yourself. I am very bright. Amen. Say, I'm very smart. I'm very, smart. I'm, very I'm very strong. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. That's what you call yourself. If somebody call you say, say, hey, whoever's bright in here, say, are you talking to me? Yeah. Who's smarter here? Over here. That's what you answer to. You don't answer the dumb, stupid. Fool, hello, 
You answer the break. Smart. Full of the Holy Ghost. Full of wisdom. That's who I am. Jesus has made unto us wisdom, 1 Corinthians 1.30. He's made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and redemption. Amen. Jesus is in me, praise God. Righteousness is in me, wisdom is in me, glory to God. So I'm not stupid. Neither are you. Tell three people, you are really smart. Yeah. Yeah. Wise, glory to God. Take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Praise God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We we'll take a look here at verse 8. But let us who are of the day, let us be sober, think straight, not like a drunk. Put on the breastplate of faith, put on the breastplate of love, and then for a helmet, put on your head the hope of deliverance. Amen. What does it do? Keep your head straight. You feeling yourself losing hope? You need to find a believer. You need to find another. That's why you need to have a prayer, a prayer partner at least. A real one now. Not a gossip partner. Oh, we're going to pray today for sister so-and-so. Oh, did you know that sister so-and-so is such a... Oh, brother, did you know, man, yeah, he's such a, such a, such a, such That ain't no prayer partner. That's a gospel partner. And that's the individual who will get you in serious trouble and kill your hope. Did you know that gossiping's a sin? The Bible calls it a sin, especially when you're lying about somebody because you're talking about stuff you don't know all the facts. Okay, amen? Your feet are now running swift to mischief. Yeah. But I said you all need a prayer partner. You need somebody, praise God, that you can go to and that who's going to say to you, all right, enough of that. Yeah. Amen. Here's what the book says. Praise God. Hallelujah. Get on morning prayer then. Get on the phone with our morning prayer. Find your way here to prayer. Glory to God. Make sure you get to every service you can get to because your hope will be alive. Yeah. Keeping people's head on straight is really important. What else would it do? Turn to the 16th Psalm. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The 16th Psalm. And notice here in verse 9, it says this. Praise God. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh, underline, also shall rest in hope. Oh, when you have hope, you don't get sick because of worry. You do not worry and make you sick. Hospitals are full of people who have anxiety. Mental wards are full of people who have anxiety. Their body got sick, but when you have hope for the future, Glory to God. You don't break down your body. Your body has rest. Turn to Acts chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say, yes, I win. Yes, I win. There is hope for me. Yes, hope for me. Acts chapter 2 verse 26 says this, Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh rest in hope. That's, what, that's why some of you get sick. Amen. You worried yourself in the sickness and disease. That's why the Bible calls it sin. It's, he calls that sin. It is the very opposite of faith. It's the opposite of hope. Are you listening to me? Praise God. That's why it's terrible for people to stand up and say, well, you know, uh, you know, never know what God, God's going to do. He can funerals, funeral service. Will God pluck this mama because he wanted another flower in his garden? Who wants to serve a guy like that? Why you take? How you tell a kid God took my mama because he he wanted her instead of you having her? And you expect that kid to want to go to church? You took my mama. Why? They're too young to understand. People live and die because of the choices they make. Choices they make. Come on. 
Why not they open the door to the devil? Come on. Or whether or not their body just gave out. You know your body will eventually give out. If Jesus, if Jesus tarries, eventually you are going to, this thing is going to stop working. But you don't have to have it stop working with sickness and disease. It can just wear out. It's just like your car. That's what it is. It's a machine. It's the most advanced, incredible. The more you study about the anatomy, it's incredible. The more I learn about this, it's just incredible. Amen. It's the most complex machine ever made. It's unreal. For someone to say that they, they don't believe in God, you need to learn a little bit about human anatomy. I don't understand how in the world a doctor, how every doctor can, cannot believe. You mean telling me this all happened by accident and we all have this? Gee, golly. Come on, somebody. That's right. You can kill yourself with lack of hope. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Now, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Amen. So hit yourself upside the head or in the chest or in the leg or wherever you want to hit yourself and say, hope down in God. Hope down in God. Yeah, like the psalmist. Praise God. Yeah, hope in him. He's my financial answer. Find what he said to do, but you got to have patience with it. Now, if, if you took 10 years and dug a hole for 10 years, amen, your expectation should not be to get out in 12 months. Thank God you do get out in 12 months. But if your expectation should, should be, praise God, I will get out. But you got to have patience, amen. I mean, you worked hard to dig that hole. Ooh, I ain't getting no amens around here. You worked hard to, to get into that hole. You didn't listen to what God said. That's how you get in holes like that. I've been teaching y'all for decades now about debt. Go right on. They do it anyway. Amen. And they get in trouble and you know, dug that hole and dug that hole and dug that hole. Man, that, man, that hole was so deep, man. Ooh, I can't even see all the way down there. That hole so deep, and then I said, God, I'm in, I'm in trouble financially. Get me out. And God said, I'll throw you a line, but you're going to have to. you so deep, it's going to take a while to get out. Ooh, I'm preaching to somebody. So you need what? You need to keep the hope alive. So you keep the word in your mouth, what he said about your financial restoration. But understand, you need faith to be working. And patience with your faith. And I'm still here in 30 days. Oh, my God, I thought he was going to get me out of debt. Yeah, he will if you don't quit. You just slide back down in the hole and let it go. I can tell y'all really love this message. I'm just a delivery boy. First Corinthians chapter 13, praise God. Now, verse 12 says that we see through a glass darkly talking about here on earth. Then it says, but now, that's the day when you get to be with the Lord, you'll see face to face. It won't, it won't be dark anymore. But he says in verse 13, and now, while you're on earth, what here on earth remains, faith, hope, and love. These three, now the biggest one, of course, the larger one is the love of God, because God's love. But notice faith and hope are coupled together again. Faith, hope, and love. See, these are critical on earth. Critical. Critical. Why you got to do the things to keep your hope up. Why you have to meditate the word. You have to say the word. You got to do it every day. You can't do this sporadically. You can't do this when you come to church and you do it with me. You got to do this at your, own, at your own place and you got to do it every morning. You got to speak that hope about your body. God's word says I'm healed and you are. I know now it's been about 20 years or more, but... Uh, I developed a big old, I mean, almost, I wouldn't say golf ball, but I would, yeah, I said it's a little larger than a golf ball. I had a tumor under my arm. I didn't tell anybody about it except the wife. And I had a tumor under my arm, and the thing was painful. So when you put your arm down like that, first of all, you could feel the lump. The second thing, secondarily, after a while, the thing became painful. Are you listening to me? Praise God. So, I'd get in, when I get in the shower, and when you get in the shower, and you, know, and you go to, I mean, you do wash under your arms, right? 
right? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, 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 when I, so when I'm doing this size, all right, and then I do this, I, oh, I got, oh, ah, I got, oh, because it hurt. But every time I'm doing it, I'm saying what the word said about it. No growth, not cysts, lumps, tumors has any power or ability to function in this body. They are cursed. This body is blessed. You are cursed, you tumor. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Then other scriptures, while I'm doing it, ouch. It's ouch. But I'm doing it. I'm in the shower. Amen. I don't even remember how long I was doing it. And I got in the shower one day, you know, and on this side. And I went to go do this side again. And I... What happened? Faith got, a, faith got with that hope. Now, the word of God kept that hope alive because Satan is saying, oh, you got a tumor. Oh, it's under your arm. Oh, it, it will spread to the rest of your system. It'll eventually get into your heart. It'll kill you. You're going to die. You're going to die. See, that's what Satan said to you, right? You're going to die. You're going to die. Remember, so-and-so had a tumor, and you're the pastor, and you buried them. See how Satan works? Yep. Amen. Okay. Hey, amen? Yep. Right. He talking all that junk. And it's, now, you don't need to be telling everybody. Now, let's give me, don't, let me clarify that. There are people who get over in spiritual pride. So they don't want nobody to know they got any sickness or disease or dealing, dealing with a certain matter. Okay. Amen? That ain't right. This ain't about your spiritual pride. That'll get you killed. Okay. Amen? You need hands laid upon you for that? That's fine. You need to get, get with other people. Praise God. Y'all come together in faith together. That's fine. I told you you, need a, you can use a family around you. So don't let your pride, which is not faith, it cancels your faith and it causes you to be dead. Okay, amen? And if I felt that I needed that, I would have I done it. I would have had y'all pray for me. Are you listening to me? Amen. I didn't think I needed it, though. In my case... So I just kept on. That thing was gone. It ain't been back. I ain't seen it yet. I got good news for you. I, I washed under my arms this morning. You can come up to me. Hey, 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 amen. And your nose will be all right. So that hope has to be kept alive because there, Satan understands this. So he's going to send everybody to you, hear every kind of TV program. Hear, all of a sudden, you'll be watching something, and they'll say, it, you know, so many people with this thing died. He'll send every kind of unhelpful and unhopeful message to you, and you, you have to take care of yourself with yourself. Amen? Now I'm coming down the home stretch. Anybody getting any of this? This is very important to you. This, this is how you live and not die. Praise the Lord. Turn to Romans chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. In the fifth chapter of Romans, we read here in verse 1, Therefore, being made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you by whom also we have access by pistis, or faith, trust, confidence, belief, into this grace, uh, amen, in this case it's going to be justification, salvation, wherein we stand and we rejoice in hope, confident expectation. We anticipate with pleasure, praise God, of God's glory. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, that's telepsis, we glory in any kind of test or trial or pressure also because we know that tribulation just works for us, patience. Not everybody, but the person filled with, amen, hope and faith in the word. Tribulation doesn't knock you out. But if you don't have it, it'll knock you out. Amen. It working for us, just cheerful endurance. And patience gives us even more experience because our faith has worked on this, had another victory. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that experience of victory does what? Give you more hope. The Lord brought me through last time. He'll bring me through this time. 
And I know even if another one comes, he'll bring me through the next time. I want to know that anybody who's ever dealt with something, but you, you survived and God got you through, hallelujah. If God brought you through that one, he'll bring you through one today. He'll bring you through one next week and next year and next decade, hallelujah, because he's the God of hope. And you can trust him. Soul, why are you quiet? Get up and praise God. The Lord's on your side, Psalm 118.6 says. What can men do unto me? What can the devil do unto me? What can sickness and disease do unto me? Nothing when the Lord is on my side. Thank you, Jesus. You feed yourself that way in the morning, praise God. That's what you do. That, that's better than good morning America. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because I have to keep up with the news because I'm a leader of thousands of people. So I got to keep up. So I watch that stuff. I know what's going on. But let me tell you what else I get that canceled that stuff out. I get the hope of the word. Yeah, I know the economy may be going to hell in a handbasket, but he supplies all my needs. I know where the faith won't always have more than enough in abundance beside glory to God. Because I said it, hallelujah. I speak it in the atmosphere. I say what God said, and I have what I say. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I have a seat. I almost done that quite. I got four minutes left on my clock. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Praise God. Romans 12, 12 says this, rejoicing in hope. <laughs> See, that'll make you laugh. Amen. Amen. You got the bad news in the envelope that said this, but amen, then praise God because you have been what? Meditating the word. You go, ha, ha, ha. And don't be fake, man. It be from your spirit, man. You rejoice in hope. Praise God. You become patient in that tribulation. Glory to God. Now, Hebrews chapter 6. I'm going to be close to making it on time. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I think. I said I think. <laughs> we'll listen to the Holy Ghost, though. Hebrews chapter 6, notice verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence. You can count on me. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be diligent about this. To the full assurance of hope, but notice, unto the end. Now, some people have hope for a while. In the parable of the sower, okay, the, the second one, you have what? People who heard the word. It said they rejoiced when they heard the word. Amen. They shouted about it. But when affliction or persecution arose for the word's sake because of the word, immediately they were scandalous. They were offended, fell away, gave up, and quit. It said because they had no depth of earth. Luke said it in Luke chapter 8, the parable of the sword. They had no depth of the word in them. Why? Which means they were living off the preacher. See, if, if I'm all the words you get all week, you're them. You ain't the good ground. Amen? You can't live off me. My job is to get you started. This is what you're supposed to study this week. You're supposed to study this issue this week. I give you what God wants you to study this week. And you're supposed to study this week and get it Get what you got up here, you heard it, and then get it pushed down into your spirit. Until it's so deep in your spirit, when Satan comes to try and check you, it's like he can't, he can't get you off of that spot. He trying to get you off that spot, but you are dug in, man. You ain't going to move because it's all the way deep down. Amen. There becomes a firm foundation against whatever attack comes. And that patience, hallelujah, say, yeah, you can hit me all you want, but at the end of the day, praise God, I'm going to knock you out in Jesus' name. You understand? There are too many people who quit 
They get into a fight, and anybody, man, remind me. I was, I'm going to tell this real, real quick. I was watching on my phone one day, uh, and there was a, I was watching a little martial arts, and we had two little kids. And they look, they look like probably four at max age. They had on the helmets, little karate thing. They, they had on a little helmet, and they, and they had, I think it was taekwondo. And, and they had on this, these uh, protective garments, right? And you had these two little boys, and they have them in the ring, right? And, the, and, they, and they come up to each other with their little karate selves. <laughs> and they come up. Okay. And then one comes up to, to, to the other one. Now, he, he don't hardly do nothing to him at all. Trust me. Trust me when I tell you. He just came up to him, and he went, oh. How he touched him. I mean, really. Didn't even touch the kid. He might have even missed him. I'm telling you, it was that kid, the one that he tried to kick, he fell down on the ground. Ah! 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 I mean, the kid fell out. Like somebody had just beat him with a baseball bat. I mean, he fell out. Why? Because somebody dared hit me. And people come up to me all the time. Well, Bishop, this is what's happening to me. I mean, the devil's doing this. And, and this, this is going wrong and all of that. And I don't do it because I'm a pastor and I'm patient. But I know I've been teaching you for 25 years. I know you. and I've been teaching you for 25 years. You should know by now. But that's all right. Come on up. <laughs> I will help you again. Okay, amen? amen? But in my mind, I'm going, you going, ah! 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 Oh, this is bad. It's happening in my life. That's right. The devil going to try to make it bad. Didn't Jesus said he come to steal, kill, and destroy? Destroy? Huh? You trying to go to church? What do you think he going to do? Of course he going to try and discourage you. He's going to try and knock you out. He's going to try and make you quit. You shouldn't be the one on the ground. You should be the one going, did you just hit me? Let me get out the word. Let me get my faith out. Let me get my hope out. Let me get my joy out. Hallelujah. In fact, let me praise the Lord on my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says, man, when you praise, you wound the enemy. All right, all right, praise God. So you got to stand the fight to the end. Now, I'll just tell you what this is because I got to wrap this up now. 1 John 3, 3 says, He that has this, this hope in him, referring to the coming of the Lord, purifies himself as he is pure. In other words, when you keep your hope up because you've been in the word of God, Amen. And you believe then what the scripture said, Jesus is coming again. That will help you live holy. See, the word is supernatural. Amen. See, it's hard to try and live holy and you're just going to do it with your flesh. You're just going to try. And, I'm going to hold on and I'm just not going to. Amen. There's a way to do this easier. Get so much in you. In you praise God. The hope of the word, joy of the word of Help you walk in purity. Now I close up with these, these people and I was going to turn to Romans chapter 4. Real quick. Real quick. Romans chapter 4. Notice here verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God. God makes alive, quickens the dead. God calls those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope. Now he's talking about Abraham. Who against hope believed in hope. See, the against hope refers to what? Refers to God gave Abraham a word. The word he gave him is your name is no longer Abram. Your name is now Abraham. You're not high father anymore, which is the word Abraham means, but you are Father of multitude, which means Abraham. So he gave him a word. But guess what? Everything around him said the word was a lie. He looked at his body. He's 100 years old. He looks in the glass looking at Mary. He's 100 years old. 
He looked down, down the room and see his 90-year-old wife. Amen. And he looked at the body, his and hers, and there was no hope for what God said. Right? But who, against hope, believed in hope? He decided to believe the hope of the world. And it's the reason why God changed his name. God changed his name from High Father to Father of Multitudes to give him hope first so his faith could didn't work. So first of all, when he starts saying his own name, I'm Father Multitude. I'm, I'm the Father Multitude. His wife said, come here, Abraham, Father of Multitude. Amen. Mother of Multitude. I mean, as they're saying, what God says, hope gives you an image. It helps you see yourself. When you start saying what God says, you can see yourself healed in the bed. You can see yourself with the bills paid off. Amen. You can see yourself being able to walk in love. Amen. You can see yourself, whatever it is, you can see it first because in order to have it, you got to see it first. Amen. 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 They use different terms for today. You got to visualize it. You got to visualize the success. See your business, praise God, coming to pass. Hallelujah. See it grow on and function. That's what God did with his name. God is so smart. Changed his name to give the man hope with his mouth. Glory to God so that his faith has something to work on. We know what happened beyond that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. And so might become. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. It led over into his faith. Today he's the father of many nations. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, God told Joshua, and remember, Joshua has to succeed Moses. How in the world would you like to be Moses' assistant pastor, and then Moses dies, and then you got to come behind him? People used, used to Red Seas opening, water coming out of rocks. Praise God, people walking on water. They used to all that sort of stuff. Amen. He dies, and he's got three mean eyeballs on you saying, so what you going to do? And the Bible tells us what Joshua did. Joshua was full of fear. Come behind him, praise God, even though Moses laid hands on him. And God said to him multiple times in Joshua chapter 1, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. And what did he say to him in Joshua 1 8? This book of the law, word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth. Meditation. But thou shalt meditate. He even actually used the word. Thou shalt meditate therein, Joshua 1 8, day and night. Wow, you got some big stuff you got to do. You got to leave. You got to leave three million people. You got to fight armies. You got to go against wall cities. Amen. You got to kick out seven nations. Okay. Amen. You got to deal with people who are not battle experienced. Amen. Amen. So you need it day and night. The bigger the fight, the more you got to do this. If you in a big time fight, baby, don't be doing this. Come once every so often, or even once a day. Amen. Raise what you need to the level of your fight. Amen. He said in Joshua 1 8, 1 8, this book of the law shall not be part of your mouth. You shall meditate there and night that thou shalt observe to do all that's written therein. Then you will make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. What about Gideon? You know about Gideon, right? Gideon, just a, he just an average somebody. Israel, because of sin, has been overrun by uh, foreign forces and all of that. And the word of the Lord, and, and Gideon has been saying, he prayed to God, and he said, he said, where's all the miracles that my fathers talked about? God, why, why are you letting all this stuff happen to us? And such and such and such. And then God said to him, gave him a word. He said, you mighty man of valor. You are going to be Israel's deliverer, you mighty man of valor. God called him mighty. He's just an average Joe. He said, you mighty man of valor. Do I have any mighty men of valor in here? I said, do I have any mighty men of valor in here? Yeah, hallelujah. Women don't want no wimp. They want a mighty man. I don't have no wimps around here, word of faith. We're mighty men of valor, hallelujah. Oh, brothers, that was... 
I got some more work to do, praise God. One more time so I can close the message. Do I have any mighty men of valor in here? Yeah. That's what you should hear from men. That's when you talk about men, that's what, you, what I should hear from men. Hallelujah. Men ought to get up out that seat and talk like a man and shout like a man and stand before God like a man. Praise God and let boys see that you are a man because what they need today is real men of God who will stand up and are not ashamed to be called a man of God. Don't let the world talk to you about toxic masculinity. Praise God, being a man and being, it's not being toxic. It's what the world needs now. Men who refuse to back down even though the nation might be against you and the media might be against you and the universities might be against you, but the Lord is on your side. That's good enough for me. Praise God. So he says, you mighty man of valor. What the first thing God told Gideon to do? He said, I want you to go down to the, to the Baal, the false god, tear that temple down. Tear it down. Put up an altar to me. Gideon tore it down. The next morning, what happened at night? The next morning, they said, who tore down the temple of Baal? And who, who, was, who put this other temple up here? Who put this other sacrifice up here? Gideon did that, they said. Now, amen. Gideon didn't back down. In fact, some other men started following Gideon. Other men began to follow man. Are you listening to me? Finally, praise God, a whole bunch of men followed him till he had 32,000 men. And then the Lord said, you got too many people. You got too many with you. So you'll be talking about y'all did the deliverance. He said, let's get rid of some of them. He said, tell the ones who are afraid, tell them to go home. 22,000 people left. Remember, you get in up here, you got 32,000, yeah, man, we got 32,000 people. And then you said, all y'all that are afraid, go home. And 22,000 leave. You got 10,000 left, and the Lord says, you still got too many. Wait a minute, God, wait, wait, wait. You still got too many to fight against the host of Midian. Go by the stream here, he said, and, and have them get water, and I'll tell you which ones to keep. Amen. And so you get some, all, but uh, all, see, 9,700 of them, when the water came, they got over into the water. Oh, uh, they ain't paying attention to what's going on. Because the enemy can attack you from any time and any side, and you have to be ready at all times. But 300 laughed like a dog. Hallelujah. And God said, take the 300. Wait a minute. I started out with 32,000 and all I'm left with is 300. Yes, you mighty man of valor. I am on your side and you will destroy the host of Midian with 300 men. Head didn't make any sense to your head. Hallelujah. But what happened? Glory to God. God gave him a strategy with those 300 men. The end of the story was, Praise God. It said that that host of Midian was as far as the eye could see. But they wound up turning on each other, taking each other out. And the 300 men prevailed in the victory. So, brothers, the Lord's on your side. Do I have any men in the house? Stand up, everybody. Praise God. Praise God. Deferred makes the heart sick, it says in Proverbs. You lay hope aside, you get yourself in trouble. Amen. 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 Every head bowed, please. Every eyes closed in prayer. God loves you so much. 
He said, I'll receive you. I don't care what your condition is. I don't care where you came from. I don't care what you have done. But I will accept you if you come to me. Jesus said it. He said, he that comes to me, I will not cast out. But Jesus also said something else. He said, if you won't know me in front of men, you afraid to know me in front of men, I won't know you before the Father, which is in heaven, and not before the angels either. And so if you're not born again today, I want to give you the chance, however, to know him and to be born again, whether you're watching me online or you're, praise God, here in this auditorium. If you're not right with God, you need to get right with him today. The world is getting worse and worse. And the Bible said it's going to get worse. Okay, amen. But you, you can be what we are talking about today, regardless of what's happening with the world. You can be an overcomer, but you can't stay out of fellowship with God and have that result. You got to come back to him. There might be someone here that says, I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. According to Acts 2, 4, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's available for every believer. Praise God. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2, 4, we will pray with you today and you'll receive. And then finally, there might be someone here that says, you know, I, I need to be in the church where the word's going to be taught in a way I can understand it, I can use it. Then word of faith is the right church for you and we'll be honored to receive you. So if you're not born again or if you're not sure about it, but you want to be sure, you're out of fellowship with God, you want to come back to him. Amen. You want to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the physical evidence of speaking with tongues, which is very important. Or you wish to join up with us here at Word of Faith, whether you're online, membership, any place in the world. Or you want to join up with us right here, physically, praise God. We'll be honored. We're going to pray in just a moment. If you're here in the all term and you say, Bishop, I need your prayer on one of those five things, the man will serve, I'm going to ask you to do something courageous. Know God before men. I want you to gather your belongings, unless you have someone you trust that you can leave them with. If you desire prayer today for one of those five invitations, amen. Step out near south, please come forward. I want to pray with and for you right now. Come in the name of Jesus. That was such a powerful service. God truly knows what we need and when we need it. And I know that everyone out there is blessed by the ministry of that word. Now, I want to say congratulations to everyone that made a decision about Jesus Christ. This is the best decision of your life. And right now on the screen, there's some important information that we ask you to follow. Fill it out in its entirety and we'll send you a gift that will help you with the next step. Thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you at the next service.